Welcome to Pocket Watch Podcast. It's your motherfucking boys. Are y'all, I this is going to be typical. Huh? Are y'all fucking wondering when Zach's going to stop doing that? Because me, <laughs> and ja- me and Jacob are. We definitely, I'm definitely waiting for it. We're fucking stop. wondering, bro. Shit. Yo, welcome to Pocket Watch Podcast. Thank you for tuning in another week. Yes, sir. Make sure you like. Follow. Share. Subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Yo, we are joined by the devil himself. Special guest today. The soul of John Barnett. Yo. Damn. No, matter of fact, table that. Table that. Yo. Yeah. It's another, that, was, that was kind of fucked up. That bro. was actually R. crazy, R. though. <laughs> Yo, if y'all caught on to that, comment down below. If you didn't, you will. Shout out to my dog, JB. Yeah, JB in the house. Justin Bieber, what's up? No. Oh, no, bro, no, no, no. Yeah, All right, guys, look. Look. That Dude, fucking fan, bro. Bro, relax. Mira, watch. Nah, mira, papi. Mira, este pa. Please, please let us know if you heard the fan before. Nobody not, heard right? the fan. Yo, the little relax things away. we do for y'all motherfuckers, right? Like, <sighs> keep it nice and crisp. Man, we try, Just man. Just a moment of silence now that you don't... <laughs> no. All right, guys. <laughs> Yo, so we are opening this episode up with a fucking conspiracy it's not even conspiracy by the time this episode drops it's a fact it's a known thing it is what is happening today zach take it away bro so there's like this thing that's been going on as everybody knows the fucking door of the boeing blew off in flight alaska flight 787 damn you remember the flight no i don't know if it was said it was a 787 it was yeah yeah (laughs) It was flight eight two eight. Shout out to. Anyways, though, but like yeah, so like as everybody knows, the the door blew off, and since then we've had a few people coming out and kind of start talking about quality issues that Boeing has had and that they've kind of been sweeping under the rug. Now we've had we've had a video that came out where somebody was inside of Boeing and was like interviewing the people and was like, "Hey, would you fly on any of the boat like these?" specific Boeing planes and the people who actually manufacture and build it they're like fuck no I ain't flying in those planes it's like no nah, there's some quality issues for that wait the people that manufactured it are saying yeah that. the people that are like I literally build them at the manufacturing plants are like no we're not gonna do it. we're not gonna do it now there's a guy named John Barnett who was like a big whistleblower for everything he came out I guess he worked for Boeing for like what 20 something years right I think yeah decades it's yeah like- it's a, he worked there for a long time I think it was like Almost 30, but less than 30, something like that. Anyways, he worked there for a long time and he had like a lot of documentation proof and uh, like a lot of stuff basically like that he kept record of, of Boeing doing for quality issues, sweeping under th- things under the rug for issues that has happened. So he's like, he came out openly and was kind of speaking about how he has this stuff or whatever. And there's like a, an active lawsuit. I think there was a lawsuit going against him, right? Yeah, it was at the moment. Yes. Yeah, there was a lawsuit that was going on against them, and they brought him in for a deposition. It was so at pa- it was is, in Palm Beach too, wasn't it? Palm Beach, Florida. I didn't no, no, it was Palm. Charleston, South Carolina. So yeah. this is Boeing suing him. No, I don't think it was Boeing suing him. I think it was a class action lawsuit against Boeing that he was speaking out on. That he's speaking for. Yeah, if I recall correctly. Okay, okay. So Boeing brought him in for a deposition just to see, like, you know, whenever you have, like, evidence, you bring it to the table, you got to go to the deposition just so they can kind of see what's going on, ask you questions about it. During that deposition, it's speculated that Boeing found out how much information he actually had. Mm. And so he went to his hotel room, and I don't know if it was the next day or a couple days later or whatever, he was supposed to have another, like, another deposition with them. Or like another court case so and the, court appearing or something. The people that are curating this class action said, "Oh, we got one. Like, yeah, we got yeah. a guy with the. Yeah. we got the whistle. Blow. Yeah, he, he. They know. And then so Boeing came in and interviewed him, and then that's when he was there with the deposition with Boeing. And I think that's when they found out that like, Boeing's attorneys found out how much he knew. Ooh, that reminds me of like an episode of Suits or something where they're like <laughs> they do the deposition. Like Boeing's like, "Yo, go 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 do the deposition, tear that motherfucker apart," and then they come back and like. 
yo, this guy is actually got some fucking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, go, go, go. So then he went back to his hotel or motel, whatever. Hotel. And, Holiday, yeah. Yeah. Holiday Inn. And then he was supposed to go back to court and like, I don't know if it was like the next day or a couple of days or whatever, but he didn't show up for court. So the court was like, okay, well, let's do like a wellness check on him or whatever. So they went to the hotel and they found him in his car, I believe, in his car yep. with the self-inflicted, uh, was it gunshot, gunshot wound? wound. Gunshot so basically like suicide, self-inflicting gunshot wound in his car. But the thing is, though, is before he died, he like before he went to his deposition, and everything like that, he told friends, he told like a lot of friends, a lot of close family and stuff like that. And he like even openly publicly stated that if anything happens to me, I want you guys, everybody to know that it's not suicide. I am not committing suicide. This is like right before the deposition, like literally days before this deposition started. He literally went to everybody and was like, listen, I'm not suicidal. If anything happens, I want you to know it was not suicide. It was it was murder. So he was starting to see people watching him. Probably. Maybe, or he had like an idea. He kind of had an idea. And so basically he turned up dead. And so the conspiracy on it, and I don't know if you can even call it a conspiracy, is that Boeing found out what information he had on him, and they killed him. They fucking murdered him. And, and it's just like how ironic, like literally he goes in for a deposition. Then they're like, oh shit. And then like literally that night he, he dies. And what's funny too, I was reading the article. They say that he was checking out that night. That supposedly he checked out that night. However, the hotel lady guest, the one you know that works there, she said they saw him eating dinner though that night in there because they used to have a restaurant downstairs. He left his ID upstairs in his room still, and they said when they saw him eating dinner that night before he shot himself, he was just scrolling through his phone. He looked relaxed. He looked calm. Like he didn't look like somebody that was about to do some drastic shit. He was just eating his food like a regular guy, scrolling through his phone, like relaxed, and then bam, just dead. So the other thing is, is this is post deposition, Mm -hmm. right? Like literally, like I don't know if it happened the night of or a couple days of. Yeah, post Boeing's attorney's deposition against him. Yeah, Uh, are depositions public record? Like, right? Do those? So I'm not sure. So like, I know if um, only depositions can be presented in the court court of law. Yeah, but I'm not sure if just because it was on the deposition. It needs to be presented in the court of law, mm. right? So the the attorneys doing the class action got all that information with them, all those with his depositions. Boeing's attorneys do their depositions. Can the law, the attorneys on the class action side say, y'all got to release what was on that deposition? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't, I don't know much enough suits to, to know the answer. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. It ended at season eight. Right? So they didn't give me enough information. I know they do depositions. I just don't know because why are they going to say, oh, he's dead now? So that's inadmissible. We got to dis- disregard that from the record. Like, what do we do? Because what's the point of killing him? So I feel like they don't have to release anything that they found in that deposition. Not that he didn't say anything he probably didn't already uh, say oh, for the class that, action. Or they can even present it as, hey, this guy was crazy. He and committed he killed suicide. Himself. He killed yeah. himself. Like, who knows what else was going on inside of his mind? His mental state wasn't all the way there in the deposition, mm-hmm. so we can't admit that in court. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to it that can they get around it. I mean, and it's funny well, how it, they, they do ahead. it. And I just feel like it's because this is the first time we hear somebody saying, if if I die, it's because of them. Bro, and, and that's it the first and, thing I do. And they die. I would do but that. The thing is, though, when they die, it still gets like as if nobody makes it bigger than what it is. It's like, hey, maybe <clears> it was. It's like we believe well, so of, much. Of course not. You know why? Boeing is one of the is, was the government's one of the government's number one contractors for fucking military weapons. Yeah, there you go. So it's like, what are they gonna fucking do? They're gonna take down the fucking company that manufactures a lot of their fucking aircraft and a lot of fucking military base weapons. That was my first question at the very beginning because this is all about this Honest, is all on Boeing. What's the percentage of uh, uh, aircrafts for the airline industry that's not Boeing? Well, it's, it's, it's been slowly increasing because Airbus. Airbus is like the Boeing's main competitor. Yeah. That's pretty much the only thing. But that's like, they're, for they're, like, they're for like far advantages. number two, I feel like, in, in the States, well, for U.S. industry. Airbus over the years have been have been significantly like increasing yeah. yeah, because like they've had better quality controls for that. And um, as of recently, I know a lot of people, when that whole Boeing 787 thing happened with Alaska flights, I know a lot of people canceled their orders with Boeing and switched over to Airbus. So, like, right now, Boeing is under a lot of scrutiny, and they're under a lot of pressure to the point where, like, if they don't get their shit together in, like, the next, like, if they continuously have these issues and something big comes out, it could lead them It could lead them to the position of being very borderline bankrupt. Do we know anything that this guy was saying? That's the thing. Nothing. Like, no. It's, 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 not, nobody knows shit. It's so, like, it's like, 
He's saying some juicy shit, and nobody really knows what he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what just, he said. I, I know. I know it has in regards to quality control. Damn. Yeah. And I know it has to do with like things that they have swept under the rug. But the thing is, I think that he was able to come with like specific, specific dates like stuff. T- yeah, dates, times, what they did, how they did it. But like in in the video I was telling you about, you can actually look up the video when they're like interviewing the manufacturer, the manufacturer workers, and people in the manufacturer working were saying that like. They have so much pressure on them to meet like deadlines for like productions that they're actually going to like part bins where like they like where they dis- discarded certain parts because they didn't meet um they didn't meet like production requirements. Yeah. They felt like a little bit shy of, of like of the quality control. And they're just grabbing parts from there because they're like, oh fuck it, we have to because we have to meet these production deadlines and we don't have time to wait for the other stuff. And they have them admitting that. And it's coming up, down. Like, we, we, you, know what we're doing. you know what's hilarious to me is uh, uh, there is a guy um, that went on Joe Rogan podcast and shit like that that was a scientist or engineer that worked on a lot of shit in Area 51. Yeah. And he went on the podcast talking about, for sure, we worked on UFOs. They don't tell us the full scope of anything. We have a small piece, a small assignment. Whatever he was like, we were re reverse engineering something. He was like, I couldn't speak to it, but to the to the to to be able to tell the full scope of everything. But like they give you these small assignments, we're reverse engineering this and that. <clears throat> and he was technically a whistleblower for that. Doesn't die, and it's like, why? Because is there a lot of speculation there? Like it could go either way. And the other thing is, it because doesn't, he- doesn't touch money. That, but also because he didn't say specifically what it was. I'm sure that there were certain things he was holding out, and I'm sure he knew, like, if he said certain things. Well, because they did it, they only gave him this scope. That guy, uh, John John Barnett. Yeah, saw way more. And and, and only that, though, you got to look at it as, too. I mean, if it's not, if it's a conspiracy that's been around since day, you said about aliens, right? Reverse engineering aliens. It can get under the rug because there's so much aliens conspiracy out there and shit. But like, Boeing is fucking commercial airline. (laughs) Yeah, this is a whole different conspiracy. And right now, they're under a lot of scrutiny with that door thing, and they're really trying to hush shit down. Remember the seat thing too? Yeah, the 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 seats in the plane, I guess, fucked up, and one of the the airline, one of the the, their planes nosedived. Because the fucking see something happen and push the pilot on the controls and the fucking plane knows that and had to yeah. catch it midair. So it's like, <laughs> it's a lot the, of shit. They're under a lot of scrutiny right now with a lot of stuff. And it's like a lot of quality control issues. Netflix, let's go. Probably. <laughs> let's soon. go, Netflix. They're like already you're working fuck, on like, it. Yo, the only one person I know, because like you said, that Boeing's a, a government company. So a government contractor company. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like when you have this kind of big company that's backed by the government, you're usually going to die. The only person that ever got away with it was Snowden, and he had to get asylum in Russia, and that's the only way he was only able to survive because you got to get asylum in Russia. That's sad. But the only thing with him is he had some other wacko shit going on. I think like even with this guy, because I wonder if they assess that. Right, because well, Snowden, this guy, they could have they could have pre-assessed that he's got wacko shit going on. Let shit. him let him let him fly. I forgot what it was, but he has. Because I remember, remember there was a lot of holes in his argument, versus a clean cut, put together, no reason to to lie or do this. Not looking for fame, literally only in depositions mm-hmm. of class actions and shit like that. Not fucking like on on uh, any big TV shows talking his shit or nothing like that. Right, like yeah, that's maybe more scary. Mm-hmm. And that's more of a reason to put somebody out. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Half and half. I feel like that their job is to discredit you. I mean, I only, I only saying for Snowden and Sarah Eric because this was just generalized. I mean, they were just basically saying the CIA is watching you all the time, every time through your phone and stuff, which is true. We always we knew that. Yeah, that was the fact. That was the main data he was trying to push out to everybody. Everything else after that was kind of whatever. That was the main thing. And that's yeah. the so, problem. Anything else he put out after that is whatever. What I'm, that's but, what I'm saying. But remember, their job is also to discredit and, and but look, for this guy, they're gonna call him fucking mentally unstable. They're gonna say he killed himself in this truck because he had issues. He had problems. They're gonna say something to discredit his image. But they went straight to Merc this motherfucker and set him up as a as a that, suicide. That's the one. <laughs> because if we don't do that. And the crazy thing about it is, the craziest part about all this was, is that I saw people like talking about it and they were saying that it was a pretty busy hotel and there was no report of gunshots. He's not like he had a silencer. (laughs) And I bet you it was a silencer and they fucking put a gun to it. Silencers are still loud as fuck. Like, yes, it quiets it, but it's 
It's really mis the term silencer is oh, really yeah. is really misleading. A it's silencer, not like Call of Duty. <laughs> no, it's not like a, a silencer <laughs> shooting. Is, is it's significantly quieter, but it's still pretty fucking loud to the point where you're like, "What the fuck was that sound?" Now, some people don't know what it sounds like, so they might get confused. But either way, there was no reports of a gunshot, no reports of anything like that. And there's no they, cameras they, they guessing they outside had to there send, either. They had to send people over there to go find out if this guy... They did a wellness check because he didn't show up for court and they thought it was weird. Hmm. But no cameras, though, no? No cameras? No angles? I don't know. I don't know. Of course not. So here's, here's and, and like, sorry to cut you off, but like, cool. and being like a government contractor, I wouldn't be surprised if it was fucking government officials that did the fucking hit. Boeing was like, hey... So here's the thing. Zach, don't speak here's too the, much. No, but here's the Man, problem. I ain't Yo, if, if, any, if any, this is like not the first time. If any of us die, we did not kill ourselves. No, we're not suicidal. No, nah, I, I don't know about me, but yeah, we're trying to nah. put an episode <laughs> next week. And Jacob's the one. Yo, I swear, man. Yo, pissed. that'd be fucked Fuck. up. I'm like, fucked nah, up. I swear he wasn't suicidal. I swear. <laughs> They're gonna show the podcast. Nah, he said right here, bro, that he, he might. But Netflix put out a documentary. I don't know how long ago, but it, I don't know if it was Southwest Airlines or something else where it was similar shit though, where it was uh, for profit, for but due to deadlines and stuff. Peducha, no, 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 no. Due to deadline. No, <laughs> they they I don't know what that is. the Netflix documentary. I forgot what airline it was. It was either American Airlines or I think it was American Airlines. They chose not to upgrade things like they should. Yeah. Because it was costly. You can hear that. Go ahead. It was costly in the way. Yeah. No. <laughs> so it's not the same thing as what this guy's talking about, but the documentary was pretty much like, um, let's just say you're a business and you got a system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And 10 years later, they're like, yo, you, you need to upgrade that system. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Or you don't. And that's fine. And you're just running a 10 times, 20 times bigger company with the same system you had back. You're using QuickBooks yeah. and you're a $20 million company, right? Mm-hmm. Fuck it. That's your problem. The issue with the airline industry is it's a safety hazard now. Like you're, you're putting lives at risk now. So that's kind of what that documentary was about, where they weren't upgrading their planes the way they should have been. And they were just maintaining what they the, had. They were maintaining to the fullest extent, but they were still using QuickBooks. Like mm-hmm. they had all the fucking upgrades. They had all the integrations. We're gonna get a season desist and a lawsuit by QuickBooks now because you just no. Me. But I'm <laughs> but I'm just saying though, like like when you're talking about lives and shit like that, it's a little different. Like it's almost to the and even here with the with the John Barnett guy or whatever in Boeing. And what's hilarious is the what feeds the conspiracy is the fact that they were government contracted. But I feel like airline industry shit like that should be. Not privatized because I think the problem is profit. You think it should be government ran? Yeah. Fuck no. Anything government ran is fucking the worst quality piece yeah. of shit trash in the world. It's hard, man. Yo, because you're right. You're totally right. And, the, and the, there's not one thing that's government ran that is a well oiled, self sufficient running machine. You're so right. You're so right. But here's the problem. What's the problem with Boeing? Deadlines, profits, whatever. They didn't sweep it under the rug because they want to kill people. They swept it under the rug so they can meet deadlines and make money and make money. And how do you get rid of that? But if you make a government contracted, then that eliminates competition. I think competition is no, healthy in order no. to create. Because if the government Facts. contracted, you can't go to Airbus. I mean, that, that's still an alternative for these airlines if they wanted to. I mean, that's oh, their yeah. that's their decision. I don't but, agree with that. You know, and it's like obviously you're not gonna have Spirit or Frontier. You're just gonna have JetBlue and this. You, you can't you, <laughs> you can't even trust our government to fucking properly fucking ban and fucking approve. Medicine. So how do you fix this? How do you fix this? I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. Better, more strict quality control concerns, like regulations. You yeah. buy, you buy from Airbus. <laughs> yeah, but, but but then Airbus, like the argument too. Boeing's probably like, yeah, we could fucking be Airbus if 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 we weren't eighty percent of the market. Yeah, but Airbus like, is eighty percent of the market. Like, exactly, they have all the market, but now you got another competitor that's like, you know what? Fuck yeah, I see their flaws. I'm gonna try to perfect those flaws so they can know that I have quality. A control. lot of it though is also Boeing's issues too. Like a lot of them is because they they spend a lot of money in research and development, stuff like that, for products that have failed. They have literally spent trillions of dollars on product on projects for the government that did, failed. Right. And so, like, that's your fucking now. That's not. I know, but else's. what I'm saying is, part of the the strain is we already have the demand. We already have the market we're looking for. We're just trying to maintain that and keep it. It's not, it's not like up poor. To alloc- par. It's not like poor allocation of funds. But just because it failed doesn't 
right? Like they're trying and it failed. Like we're trying to do the right things and it failed, but we still got to support what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. Like we still got to support the 80% of the market or whatever. I keep throwing that number out yeah. there, but it's more like, I know Boeing is way more it's than Airbus huge, in the United huge, States huge. industry. Mm, I don't know. I would like to see that difference now. Cause I'll I be honest with you. Internationally, Airbus, Airbus is up there, but Air I feel like us wise, I don't know every fucking, every art. And maybe it's only because it's the bad, yeah. but every article I see is Boeing. Yeah, yeah, majority of them. 747, majority of this or that, or whatever the case is. That's a good fact to check, What's though. What's the percentage? That is a great fact to check. Because I'm thinking, if there's no reason, say if you have majority control of the market, right? It's kind of like market manipulation. You own a majority of the market. What 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 incentive, what's this going to incentivize you to change? If, and if, do if, it if, everyone right. keeps, if everyone keeps buying planes from you, and oh, yeah, you get these little lawsuits here and there, but Airbus, Airbus is actually higher than Boeing now. Now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. so shut, shut hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm tripping. Hold on, give me a second. Try U.S. industry, U.S. airlines yeah. industry. That's the only reason why I say I think competition can help because if you have a competitor no. who can kill your flaws and do better than you, and we got the you know Southwest buying from them now, you're going to be more so, incentivized to fix your shit. <laughs> after a challenging start, this was January of twenty. This is January 20, 2024, Business Insider. After a challenging start, Airbus has no had more orders than Boeing, Boeing for five consecutive years. Bam. More orders for now. Five, five consecutive years. years. With 2,319 in 2023 compared with 1,456 for the for the Boeing company. So they're doing almost double. Almost double of Boeing. And that's maybe... And that's for the last five consecutive years. So and, maybe and, it's and the, the other way. The, we need to saying. catch up. Yeah, and it's not like catching up, but also because... Maybe it's like I told you they're on the brink of fucking bankruptcy, of and so they don't have the uh, the funds to fucking increase production like they need to. It costs money to increase production levels. You know what I mean? And that's the hard part with like I was gonna say because I remember seeing that Boeing was doing layoffs, so I was confused as to why. Well, that's the hard part with the airline industry. Is it's such a costly business? Oh yeah. That to do, like to do the things you're supposed to do is not necessarily the businessman's best interest. And I, that's where it's hard, man, because because for like space travel, privatizing it was the best thing we ever did. When it was government ran, we haven't went to the moon for fucking we went to the moon twice in 50, 60 years. <laughs> as soon as SpaceX, all these different competitions started, come started out, coming yeah. out. Now we're, just we're going, going every day almost. Same same thing for um, uh, for the automobile industry. So we sheltered American uh, automobiles, uh, Ford, Chevy. Some of those companies, yeah. we 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 uh, our government sheltered them for like some some stint of time, um, because the the foreign cars, Toyota, all these other ones were so much more superior, and they were you know those those automobile companies were lobbying against like hey protect us, they protected them, and to your point, because of the lack of competition, is exactly why right now, American automobile companies can't even touch international because they just didn't have any competition they didn't have to innovate, innovate it. they, they didn't have like, to innovate y'all gonna buy regardless. and now when that law is getting pulled out they're like whew, way behind on what was needed so listen to this as i said and this is in december of 2023 both companies dropped like their orders for the year and everything right airbus set three new industry records mm. including a backlog record which means like what they have to make which is 8,598 jets pending, uh, like, built manufacturing. Um, highest gross orders in a year, so the highest amount of orders in a year, which is 2,319, and the highest net new orders in a year, which is 2,094 jets. Also, Boeing sent a new company, a new company, all-time backlog record of 6,216 6, jets. So that means that Boeing is slowing manufacturing and decreasing. So they're getting less orders, but they're slowing down their production. Hmm. That makes That's sense. pressure. That's pressure, bro. Yeah. yeah. You're getting less orders, but now you have more orders on reserve. What does that tell you? I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> what does that tell you? That, that tells you that they're fucking running out of funds. They're, they're struggling. Yeah, they're uh, struggling. If, if, if you're getting less orders and you're having more, you're having more delays... I will always think that that tells you that your that your that your process is slowing down. You're having yeah. issues because ideally you should maintain. Like if you have a steady increase and your orders slow down, that means that you should be maintaining that same that same type of production. Right. Yeah. Which means that they're probably they're probably they probably have the money that they received and they're probably already spent that money. Now they're trying to figure it out. Well, they're and fucked. It's, 
Yeah, it's, it's I, I think bro. their downfall ultimately came from the Boeing seven. Uh, I think seven seven eighty seven max. No, nah, bro, this is this has been a slow climb. This is no, been it's been five slow coming, years. but I think we're really started like really like made it go faster with the seven eighty seven max when those planes are nose diving and crashing, bro. Oh, and let's like, just I say threw too, everything off completely. Like, this story is the cherry on top or the tipping point for the general public. Those that are in the industry knew mm-hmm. or yeah. have been hearing or no knowing of. an inkling of this type of transition that's already kind of happening. Boy, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna start seeing. Um, I think we're gonna start seeing like a a, uh, a difference in uh, flights, in flights for that in terms because it seems like it seems like Boeing is slowly getting pushed out. I know a lot of people are starting to retire a lot of the Boeing planes. Um, and I know Airbus is becoming a lot more common. It's and pilots are thing. talking about getting their getting their type ratings and Airbuses instead of Boeings now. Which it's, is like their type ratings like they're what they specialize in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that it's it's a it's a fucked up thing, bro, because it's like it's a business. But at the same time, it's like the the margin of error needs to be very small because you got you got lies. lies. <laughs> Lawsuits. I mean, they paid out a shit ton of money when them shits crashed. Well so. air arrow. Anything like arrow-wise production manufacturing is supposed to be like the most precise, most pristine, most accurate type of manufacturing and production, and in like any almost in any industry it has to be like the best of the best. Supposed, yeah, supposed uh, to yeah. Be. Because obviously, like the 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 margin of error that's acceptable is really minuscule because a lot of issues can happen and it can cause a lot of it can cause death. You know what I mean? So it's like really really serious when anything minor is wrong. So that's why they that's why they tend to hold like that they try to hold the highest standard, but that has slowly been slipping over the years. And I think that's why Boeing's been under a lot of scrutiny because they've had a lot of issues. And even from techs, like a lot of techs are are, are speaking out about like repairs that they have to do and like how much more costly and how many more issues they've been having with Boeing versus like Airbus. And you stuff. know what's crazy though is like the more like and we're such outsiders talking about this or whatever, but the more into shit you get, the more you know how to manipulate. Uh-huh. Right. So even the most robust testing, whatever the case is, industry, for example, even in like I work at a nutraceutical plant. Right. We're not pharmaceutical. Right. So we do proteins and all these other things. That's um, not FDA approved. Right. <laughs> our our regulations are way less than mm-hmm. a pharmaceutical people that make uh, Oxycontin and Adderall, course, shit yeah. like that, is way higher regulations than than manufacturing plants like mine. Yeah, right. But even then, it's like I hear some people that come from pharma places. That's like, and what's crazy is like quality. We'll get quality people, quality directors, managers, whatever the cases that come from these pharmacy places, right? And they're like, damn, you guys are better production than they. Well, even then, like you hear that some of the things they say, and it's like, like oh. Like, we're having a problem failing testing or, like, label claim. So, like, we'll send in... And that's not us. I'm just saying, like, like so that happens everywhere. Yeah. Like, oh, this batch keeps failing because we're not, we're not meeting label claim. Like, what is on the label and what we're putting... You know, that pill doesn't have exactly what is on the label and it's out of spec. We got to redo it, whatever. Um, but you'll hear some of these guys, like, oh, what, what tester do you use? Like, what, what lab do you send your shit into? And it's like, wait, what? Why what? does that matter? Why does that matter? Oh, mm-hmm. so y'all know just who to send the lab shit to that, mm-hmm. that sends back the results. And yeah. now you check out. Now your paperwork's perfect. But because of the lab you sent it to, same shit for the airline industry. You know what yeah, I'm saying? It's like, it's like, oh, you you met all the regulations needed, but because you know the industry and because you know the suppliers or the 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 people that outsource or you know whatever the case is, you know how to work that shit, man. It's scary, bro. And and yeah. that's when you really fix those problems. Is like, oh, we don't need to fix the company. We need to fix the labs. Mm-hmm. Oh, we you know we don't need to fix Boeing. We need to fix I don't know what the fuck it is. You know what I mean? Like Just Boeing's quality control. Like the people, but no, nah, that that's the issue though. Is like, what is the th- company them, that's doing them, quality? Them that are literally saying let's go pull parts out of the fucking the quality control bin that has failed. That's Boeing. But I'm yeah, sorry, that, that's Boeing. It. Yeah, because Boeing. that means that their quality control did their fucking job. 
Yeah. That's them sending it to another lab. Yeah. Essentially, you know what I mean? That's them bypass bypassing it and it's been like, "Ah, fuck it." It's But who knows, bro? Cuz a lot of those like uh there's not a more um uh when it comes to building something, there's not a more like crazy network of suppliers than airline. Like to build a plane, those companies have thousands of suppliers yeah. to build a plane, right? And for all we know, part of the quality control of Boeing is checking shit as it comes in, right? And it's like, oh, yeah, it's got all the documents it needed, bomb, 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 good. But is it like, oh, for this whole piece that needs to be whatever the case is, same thing, it's the lab analogy, right? For all these suppliers that we're getting these pieces from, as long as they supply the documentation or whatever the case is, boom, then we put it together and, and, and it's good. But if any of those pieces that we got, if some of these motherfuckers are shady or whatever the case is, like that's another way of looking at. It. And to not to say that Boeing's innocent, there's a part that says, "Hey, Boeing's like these guys are cheaper. We're gonna use them because they're cheaper." I don't care what they're doing with the. I, I agree with that one thousand percent. But still, I feel like what debunks that whole ideology is the fact that they're going into the part bins that they declined and they're accepting it. And that's why he got murked. And, and <laughs> exactly that bottom that, line that would yeah. be that would be you like you guys saying like okay we know this product is throwing our our pill calibration off and then like your other supplier is not producing fast enough and you guys are like ah fuck it let's just go ahead and use the other fucking supplier we know that his shit's not the quality that we need but let's just fucking use it anyways because we have no choice yeah man yeah no I just say that to say like there's, like there's, there's a lot of things that play into it but the Boeing situation definitely could be exactly what it is but like like. <clears throat> How do you fix that problem is a whole... You know what I mean? Well, you, like, kill, you kill the guy that knows everything. It, well, that's one thing. <laughs> it doesn't fix it entirely, but it, it definitely helps it out for the moment. Definitely does. Yeah, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, John. I, we I, know you didn't kill I, yourself. I appreciate you, JB. I appreciate you yeah, because put you, it out there. You, you helped risk, us with you, you an episode your of content. In the sad, uh, majority of people are going to forget you, and then everything's going to go down to nothing. Well, everything you said is probably going to go nowhere. Like, are you guys next flight you take checking like what what uh, aircraft that airline uses? I know it's Boeing. I always so check. It sucks. I mean, it is what it is. I just fucking. Jump I always on check this because I, I'm like, oh, I get to fly in this plane. That shit scares I me. I flew for, I flew in an Airbus for the first time not too long ago. Really? I never flew in an Airbus. Which is why it like the numbers you said like like astounded me a little bit. You know what I mean? Like you would think like because it's part. It might also have to do with the air the airline companies that we do. That we do use, like I usually fly, like I used to fly a lot of Southwest, um, and it makes sense because like Spirit and Frontier don't use Airbus. No, and that's all I fly. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm scared, bro. Because Stan does exclusively Frontier and Spirit. Really? And I'm like, yo, I fucking hate those. Maybe airlines. we gotta switch it up. JB died for our sins. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, thing you talking about? He Justin died. Bieber, he bro. died for our right. Yeah, to fight. Dupont. <laughs> Where's it at? Uh, well, that was good. JD, that was it's for you, bro. I don't know, bro. How much time we got? We got 33 minutes. 33? Uh-huh. All right. I got, I got one thing. Motherfucker. What do you guys, what do you guys think? I don't. All right. <laughs> Because I was going to try to use this one. Uh, what do you guys think? What is what is the key to happiness? Consistent post- live, no, your, <laughs> live your life. I think I think if the you key- could, if you could say one, because my next question would be like, what's your top three? But there's a study. <laughs> a- there's so the longest study on human happiness by Harvard has determined something has been the key to happiness. So uh-huh. this was the longest study on the human happiness by Harvard, right? Just because it's Harvard, we got to believe it. But on, on what is the key to happiness? What do you guys think it is? So I feel like the average person is going to say something along with finances. I think they're going to say like comfortability. No, this isn't what people say. This is a psychology department studying people, and they're probably just interviewing people or doing whatever, and then they're determining what they think that person's key to happiness is. Okay. If that I, changes, your I answer. think a lot of people are gonna say. I think I think it's probably gonna be like some type something with finances, like either like financial independence, like financial independence or financial comfortability, just be able to pay bills on a day to day basis. But I would say that like 
I would say probably like love and support from like people, you know. Okay. Yeah, I would. Uh, I mean, I I would just say, kind of was like kind of was accent like just just live your life without any constraints. Meaning like just be you and like don't give a fuck about financials or best car, or best house. But what anything. enables you to do that? I think that's the point. What do you mean? Like what enables you to not give a fuck about things? Just to find, like, if walking makes you happy, go walk. If singing makes you happy, go sing. No, no, no. <laughs> He's like, no. So, so you would say the key to happiness is doing... Walking? Doing what you what you desire. Yeah. Free will. A little bit. Free will. Free will. Little, free little will. Bit. Not feeling like you're constrained. But, but, but Chris is saying, like, Chris is saying, like, what would lead to you to having that free will? Like, yeah. Well, all right, but we're talking about still nine to fives and stuff like that, like job no, scenarios. No, just, the, yeah, the, the average... And that's still in the aspect of the question. And we're thinking very general. Very general, like, like, cause, cause I think there's something that allows you to say, uh, I don't give a fuck about, uh, I'm, I'm going to do what I want to do or whatever. I would say, you know, fuck it. Having a partner. Like, you know, like like, love, not love, but just having a partner. Like, so like having a a connection with another person that that, that is enough. I think love and support. I don't think it has to be like a a relationship partner, but you know, I don't need to have, I don't need to be fucking. I just need to be ducking. So. Y'all are pretty on point, right? So the Harvard study of adult development has established a strong correlation between deep relationships and well-being. So how, how um, what is it? Let me see what this one said. I believe that, though. And the reason why is because I feel like, I feel like life can throw me anything. But as long as you have your significant other and you know that they're there by your side... And they're willing to like stick it out with you and just like grind it but out. They, I think like you'll you'll ultimately feel like you know what this this situation might suck, the circumstance might suck, but like I'm getting through it. You know what I mean? Versus when you're by yourself and no love. So that's they said worse. maintaining close relationships, yeah. which is yeah. a, is a general way of saying that. Like if it's just you and your partner, mm-hmm. boom, that's your close relationship. That 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 is the key to happiness. And some people need friends, like good friends, mm-hmm. close friends. Yep. Yeah. How about this? You got a partner and good friends. That's yeah, that's, that's, why I said, that's why I said love and support. That's, that's the best. That yeah. is the key to happiness right yep. there. I agree with that. Because you can be the richest person in the world, but if you have no partner, you have no friends. Yep. What you, how many rich people killed themselves or were miserable? Yep. And then if... And that, that's the issue, too, with a lot of rich people. Like, they don't know what's genuine and what's not. No. Yeah. And a lot of them struggle mentally that's, with that. that's, like, you don't understand that, like, doing what you think you should be doing is actually deteriorating what gives you the key to happiness. Not only that, but also the fact that, like, in the process of trying to obtain that money and stuff like that, you, you gotta end, be. You you end up losing sometimes friendships because then like so they sometimes turn and Jealousy act weird. And, and not just that, then once you have once you have that level of money and success and fame or whatever it is, you're kind of stuck wondering like, is, is this person here for me? Or is this person here for what I what I've achieved? What I have? Yeah, man. And it's and like that's why I don't think I would ever want to be like some famous rich person that's like celebrity status because I feel like. The mental capacity of trying to figure out what is what is genuine and what is not has got to be so tiring. But it also goes to the point of like the most like wealthy people or successful people are borderline sociopaths yeah. because of what they need to do to get there or whatever the case is. And it makes you wonder, are they the most unhappy people also in mm-hmm. the world? Mm-hmm. Right. Or whatever the case is. And then you also think about the people that truly commit suicide. Shout out to J.B., but like, Damn, I'm just saying, but like a lot of those traumas that make people go commit suicide are because of close relations. So it's yeah. almost like the negative, like the thing that is the key to happiness. If that's negatively impacted, that is the worst traumas that you yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. Like on the other end. Mm-hmm. And it also makes me think if close relationships. So it also says well-being, mm-hmm. which is way too generic for me. But I think clo- the close relationship part is is heavy. Mm-hmm. It makes me think about some people because I do see this trend on social media and stuff like that about like I'm working on myself. I need to work on myself. I need yeah. to bring my which is part of your well being, right? But what if working on yourself is to the detriment of your close relationships, right? Like what if working on yourself is I need to learn as much as possible. I need to work out as much as possible. I need to maintain. My how like all my assets as much as possible. I like I need to work on me so much, yeah. and you cut out the close relationships. Are you stunning yourself from the true key to happiness? I feel like I feel like a true good um, close relationship that's like good would allow you and respect you to have that space to do what you need to do. No, I know that, but I'm just saying like, how about 
I don't, I, I, what I'm saying because, though is, because what I'm, I'm saying is like focusing on yourself and doing what you need to do should not be detrimental to your close relationship. Facts. You get what I'm saying? That's that's how that's how I feel with it. I feel like that shouldn't be a, a, a limiting factor for for your close relationship. I feel like if that's a limiting factor for your close relationship, then maybe you need to re re uh, like reevaluate your close relationship. But I think what you're kind of saying is because I'm working on myself so much, I lose a relationship. Which, to your point, I agree with. I don't care about that relationship a little bit, right? But also, if you're working on yourself so much, do you really have close relationships? This is the next point, right? And I think the partner is one thing. So I think working on yourself like crazy, right? Like working out, learning all the time, doing all this stuff, and having a partner, maybe that, maybe those are the two factors. That's all you need. What, what, what I was saying is that you working on yourself shouldn't cause you to lose your, your close relationship. And the aspect of it is, is if it's a true relationship, like a true close relationship. But what is defined close? You know what I'm saying? Because if 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 you don't put any work, if you don't if you have ninety or eighty percent on yourself, ten percent on whatever, and you know, even twenty, if you're only putting twenty percent effort into your quote unquote close relationship, even if that person even if you're putting a hundred percent into yourself and that person that is your quote unquote close relationship is still there. Ride or die, I'm here forever. I, I are I, you putting effort into your close relationship? Are you getting the benefit of the close relationship? I think I think it's definitely gonna be like a little bit different per person to person. But I don't think a close relationship is something that you have to be constantly present at that moment. You can have a close relationship with somebody I think a I think a close relationship is not measured in the amount of time that you spend with that individual, but a close relationship is what type of emotional and attachment do you have with that individual, and that's not measured on how much time you guys spend together. I agree. Which yes, you know, like it, it can definitely be like okay, well you have to spend like it's good it's good to spend time with that person and grow that close relationship, but just because you 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 don't spend as much time together as you used to or whatever. It doesn't mean that that's no longer a close relationship. I feel like a close relationship is the connection with you have with the person. It's not how much time you spend with that person. You know I mean? agree with you. And the other that's s- how I feel. Yeah, no, and I agree. The other side of it is what generates happiness, right? What part of a close relationship generates the key to happiness? I feel like it's the connection. Is it engaging in it or is it just having it? Because kind of you know, what you're talking about is, yeah. okay, if I, if I spend 90% of my time working on myself and I have this close relationship... Should I still have? I, do I, I still I have feel the like keys the, to happiness? I feel like you're diving more into like the balance of happiness, though. With and that's what I'm factors. saying. You need because, some balance there because you're kind of talking about like working on yourself and, and trying to grow yourself in other aspects that can bring you happiness in that aspect. But then you're also talking about like I don't, I don't think it's that I don't think it's cutthroat just one thing. But like I feel like if you had to choose one thing over everything, I feel like those close relationships here's, would trump it, everything. No, right? no, for sure. Here's here's a great example. The three of us knew each other since fucking predators, right? It's been sixteen years. Me and Zach knew each other since elementary school or whatever, right? And we could say for the past, you know, let's just say from high school to it's been to the ten, podcast. It's been no, but like it's been. <laughs> When did we start a podcast? Three, four years ago, right? Yeah. yeah. So let's just say from high school, and then there were seven years before we started the podcast. Mm-hmm. We had close relationships. Yeah. We, I could have texted any of you guys, and and we could meet up, and we have this. Me and Jacob had that relationship for six Ooh. years. Me and Zach had that relationship for yeah. longer, all throughout high school. So that's 16 years of, we have a close relationship. I could see Zach, I could see Jacob, we could pick up like we were fucking best friends, right? Like, like we'll pick up like nothing happened. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a close relationship. But are you juicing out of that close relationship what it takes to, to get that key to happiness is mm. the next step. Yeah. Because you can't tell me from high school to until we started the podcast, I got to juice out of our close relationship the same amount as when we started this podcast. Yeah. Right. No, I agree. When we started this podcast, it's like, yo, I got, I got, we, there's three close relationships here that we are juicing and mm-hmm. I am vibrating off of this energy. Yeah. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is different. So it's almost like, yes, the close relationship, if it's a real close relationship that's worthwhile, you shouldn't have to put time into it. But if you don't put time into it, are you really reaping the rewards of it are you reaping yeah. the benefits yeah no i i, I agree that's so, a weird concept there right it's true though it is true 
And I, and I think that there's definitely going to be moments in your life that you're going to you're going to need that close relationship more than other times. And I think that and you also have to sometimes understand you also sometimes have to understand that it might be vice versa for somebody else. They might they might need that close relationship from you in certain times more than you need it. And it's just kind of like the balance you got to keep. And sometimes you just got to be aware of that. You know what I mean? And that's where I think that's why that, I mean, like most studies are bullshit. Uh But that one was like close relationships and well-being. And there goes your balance. Uh And it's like, if you don't put enough effort into yourself or time into yourself, that's that's half of it. Uh But also just because you have close relationships doesn't mean you're going to derive the benefit you need to get from it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, That's a good point. It's fucking crazy, right? That's a good point. That's a yeah. really good point. Shout out to Harvard. <laughs> Smart motherfuckers. Yeah, right? You little you fucking, fucking dorks. Tire, you, yeah, you nerds. You nerds. <laughs> fucking dorks, <laughs> bro. Fucking wasting our time, you fucking nerds. Fucking dorks, man. We- hey, man, that's another episode. <laughs> Dropping fire. Drop that like. If you if you listen to the end, we appreciate you. You man, appreciate yeah, it. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Yo, shout out to Joshie. Uh... Some something cool. Usually Who's I send Jossie? so I usually I send you guys screenshots. Yeah. Whenever I get like positive reinforcements, because I want to share the love. Um, but I've I've gotten a couple from like people in my program, people like at different people. You know what's really funny is I let people know I do a podcast, and then like month a month later, two months later, I'll get a text. This episode was dope. That's even the best, bro. That That's shit, better bro. Than, than next day. Yeah, great shit. Like, <laughs> you, you, you know what I like better than that? I like whenever like you say something about it, and like next time you meet up with somebody, they're like, "Yo, that episode where you said this, this, and then that, that shit was fire." And I'm like, "Damn, bro, that was like." I had two like two real good experiences from that, and for friends. And one was Nick Weston. We were talking about. We talked about we talked about something with wedding, something yeah. about weddings. I was talking about my experiences and how I'm struggling, like not inviting people or whatever. And I got a text like right after that episode. I didn't even know Nick was listening to our shit or whatever. And he was like, yo, I just want to let you know, like it was really it, I was like, yo, that's crazy. Like, I didn't know you were listening. Same thing. I told this dude in my program like like two semesters ago that I had a podcast. I got a text last week. With the episode, sent me the episode from Apple Podcasts. But by the way, because he was sending me something about homework, like, yeah. yo, here's this, here's that. Sent the episode. By the way, this episode was dope. And I was like, that's pretty fucking cool. That was really fucking cool. And it was the plane crash theory episode, too. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you. Yo, y'all give the blowhorn some bro. credit, bro. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We Thank you guys for tuning for another y'all. week. Make sure you guys like, follow, share, and subscribe. Bang. Get it, bitch. Hey, 3K on YouTube. What's up? I know, bro. We taking off on YouTube, bro. Hey, we advertising. We ain't 5K by March, though. My birthday, like you said, though. Nah. nah, nah. That, well, yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Don't don't optimism. If we're like 3.8 right now, right? It's a little balance. Look, this is after the episode talk. It's a little bit of balance between like marketing. Right, because you can't tell me, name a successful business that doesn't market, right? Yeah. A little bit. So we're marketing, but also it's like, how do we track the marketing with organic growth, with this? And that's why I've been wanting to focus on content. I'm just joking. I think you've done good. <laughs> I'm just joking. These past, this today was. This is what the fuck I'm talking about. This is what you want. This is what I'm talking about. See, Jacob sober is a dope Jacob, man. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. All right, pocket watch out. Pocket watch, watch out. out.